No, I had to hold this. That's going to change things a little, but oh well. <laughs> no, that might make me more nervous, too. So. Um, I'm Kate Adams, and um, the man I love, the man that is the love of my life, was diagnosed with multiple myeloma cancer last winter. And I am also so grateful for this writing group and some of the people that I've met here. And I feel honored to be here among such incredible people that are brave enough to share and reach out and help each other. And the group really helped me by being able to write and be listened to and validated. And even when some of my stuff was pretty angry or pain or raw, just acknowledging that I had a right to those feelings, but that they could also help me on that journey towards finding the places of comfort. And so this is one that I share with you. Uh, we were asked, it, the prompt was, um, somebody wrote my autobiography in five short chapters. Mine is gonna be six. It's only biography up till now. We don't know what comes next yet. Um, mine's called Mud Puddles. Chapter one. I plop down into the mud puddle. My cloth diapers soak up that wet water. And I take my hands and spread my fingers as far as I can and I slam them on the surface of the water and giggle as the splashes go out away from me, and yet mud blobs also speckle my sunsuit. Back then, I didn't care what my mother would think about that. So I giggle with wet delight. Chapter two. I get off the bus and I walk up the driveway and I see all those mud puddles after the rain. Oh boy! Mother opens the screen door as I walk up the driveway. Grow up. Put your shoes on and tie up your laces. I sit on the ground in a silent sulk while I pull my socks back on, then the sneakers. But then I turn and I stomp, knees high, slamming those puddles as much as I could. My shoes are on, right? <laughs> With a clear conscience, I went through the door. When she looked at me, I just said, I have my shoes on. We won't go into the conversation after that. We will move on to chapter three. Now as an adult, I stand in the river, up by Taftsville Bridge actually, holding my camera. My feet are wet because I'm in the middle of the river with the waters churning and surging around me, so my sneakers and jeans are wet. I'm holding my camera, though, of course, up out of the water, and I'm waiting for the trail riders and horses that are going to come along the trail and come across the river. And I want to capture photo glimpses of them as they splash through that water. Because it also reminds me of when I would be riding my best friend, my Morgan Stallion, on that ride and love to splash through the water. And at times when I would come to a water stop, he was so smart that he knew that if he was sweaty, that if he got himself wet, it would help cool him down. Well, you can imagine my embarrassment when we get to the water and he goes in knee deep and lays down to roll in it. Oh, by the way, we did go on and win that ride after they told us I couldn't do that, couldn't win trail rides with a Morgan Stallion, but he was smarter than I was. <sighs> Chapter four. The driveway puddle reflects from the sky, clouds bordered by treetops. The light breeze sends ripples scurrying over the surface. As I skirt the edge, I look deeper into the murky water. I can see the pebbles that rest in the shiny clay bottom. I want to slide my toes through that brown ooze, but I walk away. 
It would be inconvenient to get my shoes wet. Chapter 5. Today, I walk in the rain barefoot. I step into a puddle on the lawn. Actually, it was a horse pasture, so had a few added delights. But my toes were tickled by the clover leaves. I just loved looking down and feeling the earth and the water. The earth seemed to enjoy the imprint of my soul, my foot's soul, on her bosom, and maybe even was feeling the imprint of my heart's soul in her heart. And clear water would seep up between my toes, and my heart overflowed with a fountain of joy. Chapter 6. I'm much better at taking off shoes now. I'm not held back by the ways I was trained or expected, or even my own inconveniences. I came prepared. I have truly, through these last months, had some of my pain soothed by going out into creation and enjoying the art and the comfort and the beauty that the Creator has prepared for us if we would take the time to stop and notice, to sit and be still and to listen. So I've been going barefoot a lot. My feet aren't quite as tough as they were when I was 10 years old, but they're getting there. Chapter 6, a large truck sped through the puddles laced with autumn leaves. It squished the leaves to the bottom and it left deep ruts in the road. In anger, I want to slam out the mutant cells. Instead, I acknowledge my anger, but that that anger probably isn't going to be very fruitful And so instead, I step into that wet, slimy, ground cloud. I wiggle my toes in the slime, and the mud oozes up between my toes. <coughs> and I say, with a sigh, Mother Earth, Mother Earth, comfort me, nurture me, sustain me.